Hello Crossroads Cove Nation. It is great to be back with you all once again this week for another teaching video. We have made it to the month of August, which means we are starting a whole new series for our videos and for our webinars when we talk about these videos. So last month we talked through the book of Judges, highlighted some of the key people found in the book of Judges, and this month we are going to be going through 1 Samuel, or the first part of 1 Samuel, covering the life of Samuel. And things kind of fit together nicely here because Samuel himself was considered to be like a hybrid judge-king type figure. He's kind of the bridge between the period of judges ruling over Israel to kings ruling over Israel. And so for this month, we're going to be talking about Samuel and what his life looked like. And then next month, we're actually going to be getting into the kings of Israel. So we're going to spend a whole month next month talking about Saul, month after that David, month after that Solomon, kind of talking about the big three kings of Israel. But for this month, we get to talk about Samuel and spend our time in the big first couple chapters of 1 Samuel. And so for today, we are going to be talking about Samuel's birth narrative, or how he was born and all the miraculous circumstances that surrounded that, that would really gave glory unto who God is and to how he works. So today we are going to be in 1 Samuel chapter 1, and then we're going to also read chapter 2 up until verse 11. So in chapter 1, we learn that Samuel was parents, so he had the father named Elkanah, and his father had two wives named Peninnah and Hannah. And so we learn, this is verse 2, he had two wives, one was called Hannah and the other Peninnah. Peninnah had children, but Hannah had none. Now, this is a key thing to remember. And at this time, in the time of 1 Samuel, having children as the woman was a very, very important thing. Um, many times, women were valued based on the number of children that they could produce. And children were very, you know, still are today, very cherished by mothers and fathers alike. And so for Hannah to not have any children was a big deal for her and it definitely affected her as we will see and so verse 3 says year after year this man Elkanah went up from his town to worship and sacrifice to the Lord Almighty at Shiloh which means as we've learned in the time of judges it was kind of a time when people weren't following God very often so the fact that this man Elkanah Samuel's father was a devout follower of God and kept up going to worship the Lord um on a, on a schedule as he should is a very important thing to point out as well. So every year he'd bring himself and his two wives to go and worship the Lord. And so we learn more about Hannah, how she doesn't have kids in verse five says, but to Hannah. So we're talking about the portion that Elkanah would give his wives during the sacrifice time. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her and the Lord had closed her womb. Verse 6, because the Lord had closed Hannah's womb, her rival, so Peninnah, kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival, Peninnah, provoked her till she wept and would not eat. So like I said earlier, the fact that Hannah did not have children was a very big deal to her. It was very um, depressing and sad, and she craved and really, really wanted a child. And so we see that Hannah is so, so desiring of this, that one day when they are at this temple, um, as Peninnah and Elkanah and Hannah, Hannah decides to take this up with the Lord and just pour out her heart in front of God and let him know how strong of a desire she has for a child and how she is hurting over the fact that she does not have a child yet. And so her prayer, is recorded in chapter 1 verse 11 so then she made a vow saying Lord Almighty if you will only look on your servants misery and remember me and not forget your servant but give her a son then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life and no razor will ever be used on his head so Hannah continually prays more and more and in that moment just is weeping probably is just so so desperate so hurting and just letting herself out in front of the Lord. And this is a great example for all of us, once again, that when we have times of prayer with God, it's not about a time of showing how strong we are or how much we know or how many cool words we can 
phrase together as a means of impressing others or impressing God. God just wants to hear our hearts when we pray, and he loves hearing the desires of us as his children. And so Hannah is praying and praying. It gets the attention of the priest. The priest thinks that she is drunk or just is kind of acting a little bit crazy. And Hannah says, no, sir, I am actually praying my soul out in front of the Lord and just so desperate to have a son. And so the priest's name was Eli. He'll come into play in later videos. It says, Eli answered, go in peace. May the God of Israel grant you what you have asked for. And so we turn out, we find out that Hannah becomes pregnant. So the Lord answers her prayer, verse 20. So in the course of time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, saying, because I asked the Lord for him. So it's Hannah prays out to the Lord, saying, God, I'm so desperate for a son. And if you were to grant this request, I would have my son serve you in the temple all the days of his life. Which basically means that she wouldn't really get to be a part of his life until he, uh, once he was weaned off of her, he wouldn't be able to be in her household anymore. He would be serving the Lord. But Hannah still gets the joy of having a son. And so, once this, her son Samuel is born, it comes time for Hannah to make her vow good and to actually follow through on what she said. And this is what she did. Um, one day, it comes time for um, Elkanah and Peninnah and, you know, the family to go up and worship the Lord. And Hannah tells this to her husband. She says in verse 22, Hannah did not go. She said to her husband, after the boy Samuel is weaned, I will take him and present him before the Lord, and he will live there always. So Hannah is going to make good on her vow. And so for Elkanah, her husband says, do what you need to do. Um, I trust that you are following the Lord, and that is a good thing. And so this is what exactly what she does. Samuel is weaned off, and it is time for him to be brought up to the temple, for her to make good on her vow, and for Samuel to be in the temple, serving the Lord all the days of his life. And so she makes sacrifices before the Lord to thank him for his provision. And here, <clears throat> excuse me, here's what she says to Eli as she's handing him Samuel. Pardon me, my Lord, as surely as you live, I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord. For his whole life, he'll be given over to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord there. And so Hannah says to Eli, basically, I made a vow to the Lord. You remember me praying here, you know, a little over a year ago. You thought I was crazy, but I was desperate for, for a child. God heard my request. Um, I made a vow to God saying that if you were to give me a son, he would serve you, you all the days of his life in this temple. And so here I am to make good of this vow. And so after this, Hannah breaks out into prayer in the first part of chapter two. And what I want to do is something kind of a little untraditional um, for these videos. I'm just going to read to you um, Hannah's prayer because I think it's a very significant and beautiful prayer talking about how God is sovereign and in control of everything. And then I'll have some concluding remarks for us before we get done with this video. So here is Hannah's prayer, 1 Samuel chapter 2. Then Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord, and the Lord my horn is lifted high. My mouth boasts over my enemies, for I delight in your deliverance. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Do not keep talking so proudly or let your mouth speak such arrogance. For the Lord is a God who knows, and by him deeds are weighed. The bows of the warriors are broken, but those who stumbled are armed with strength. Those who were full hire themselves out for food, but those who are hungry are hungry no more. She who is barren has borne seven children, but she who has had many sons pines away. The Lord brings death and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and raises up. The Lord sends poverty and wealth. He humbles and he exalts. He raises the poor from the dust and he lifts the needy from the ash heap. He seats them with princes and he has them inherit a throne of honor. For the foundations of the earth are the Lord's. On them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful servants, but the wicked will be silenced in the place of darkness. It is not by strength that one prevails. Those who oppose the Lord will be broken. The Most High will thunder from heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. And then closing remarks from this chapter. Then Elkanah went home to Ramah, but the boy, Samuel, ministered before the Lord. 
under Eli, the priest. So I think a lesson we can learn from the story of Hannah and Samuel being born is that everything God gives us on this earth, things that we pray and ask God for and he answers us, or things that we unexpectedly receive, everything God gives us is for a purpose. And the purpose is to serve and glorify him with it. Now, I'm not saying that every single thing God gives you in the case of Hannah has to be given away and, and not enjoyed. Um, Hannah having Samuel and giving Samuel over to the priest and over to the temple is a very special occasion, but I think it points to the more broader truth that everything that God gives us is to be stewarded or meant to be used for his purposes and for his glory. It's not meant for us to kind of take it and just keep it close to our chest, say, nope, no one's touching this, this is mine, and I am going to use it only for my own you know, sake, and that's it. But every single thing that God gives us and the beauty of who he is is meant to point us back to him so that way, like Hannah, we can thank God for his provision, for his way that he's worked in our lives. But it's also meant for us to take that thing and to use it to glorify God and serve him. Because every single thing that happens on this earth is not by accident. There are no accidents on this world. God is in control of everything. And so our highest calling is to know God, is to make him known. And so everything that he puts into our lives or gives us, things that we even are fervently, fervently praying to God, asking him for. And, you know, as he answers those things, they are meant to be received, meant to be super thanks, thank, thank you, God, this is an amazing and good gift. But then whatever that thing may be, whether it be, um, you know, a, a new possession or a new tool, something that you, you know, enjoy using, or it might be, you know, a restored relationship with a friend, or it might be a new friend, or it might be the health of yourself or a family member or something like that. All of those occurrences, all those happenings are meant to point us back to God to glorify him and to be used to show others and to show us who he is and continue to further his kingdom, further his, his gospel message, his truth being spread out into this world around us for his glory. Because that is what we are all called to do. And so just as, as in Samuel's case, his mom, Hannah, begged God and, and really prayed to God for him and poured out her heart to God, which is an amazing and wonderful way we ought to all follow when we pray. And when God provided that, she said, I am going to give this back to you, God, to glorify you. And so she gave her son to Eli the priest, that way he could serve God in the temple and glorify him in that way. And so if you get one thing out of this message, or two things I want you all to get out of this message, first of all, to follow Hannah's example and pouring out our hearts before God when we pray. It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be, you know, these awesome versed out words that are so impressive, but just pouring out our hearts before God in all honesty. And then when God answers your prayer or God gives you a good gift or something that you just enjoy, don't hold it all to yourself. Give God the glory. Thank him for it, first of all, and then see how you can use and steward that thing or whatever that may be for the purposes of God, to glorify him, to love others, and to spread his truth and his gospel around this world. Because when we do those things, guys, that is when we get the most joy and pleasure on this earth. For that is what we were created for. Let me pray for us, and then we'll be done with this teaching video. God, we thank you for examples like Hannah, Lord, a, a woman that was after your heart, that was open and honest with you as she prayed. God, I pray for myself and for those who watch this video that we would follow her example in just pouring out our hearts in all honesty before you, God. And Lord, when you answer our prayers and you give us good gifts, Lord, may we not hoard them for ourselves, God, but instead give them give you the thanks for it, and then use these things as a way of honoring and glorifying you, God, and just showing others you're working in our lives and how great you are. Lord, we thank you that you are a God who loves us. You are a God who is for us. Even in these unknown, uncertain times, help us to trust you that you will provide and you will continue to give us what we need each and every day. We give you all the glory for this video. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Awesome. It was great being, all with, being with you all once again from their teaching video. I will see you guys at the webinar on Friday to discuss. See you then.